wedlock. Accidentally, it seemed, I was on top at last. Take that, you bitch. This, and another for good measure. She, being in her birthday suit at the time, thought it all a bit rough and said, Brother, if you don't lay off, I'm going to call for mother. Do what you like, I said, and belted her across the other. Then persisted along these lines with uppercuts to the other. The outcome of it all was that Gwen, with two black eyes, knocked about udders and blood on her fangs, took it all and more with an ambivalent shudder. We just heard wedlock and uh, Jack, uh, when we were speaking earlier, you mentioned that you began your theatre origins were through poetry. That's right, yes. And is that, a, is that an early... Yeah, it's very early, 1966 probably. Uh -huh. uh, Same age as me. So Carlton, <laughs> Carlton in, around that time, was full of uh, poets. And there were te probably three or four terraces that had poetry readings. And I, I used to go to those. Mm -hmm. And that particular poem, um, because it's quite theatrical and it's a monologue, uh, after a while I thought, well, why don't I write a play? And I did, I wrote Wild, Wild Wills. Uh, and is that, what, what was the, can you describe it, because it's very, obviously a very famous scene, yeah. Carlton in the mid-60s, Pram's on the way, the mama's on the way, can yeah. you just tell us a bit, you were a student at the time, or had you? Uh, I, I was resident at, at, at St Vincent's. Uh, were, you, were you hanging around Carlton a lot as a student, previous to? Uh, yeah, I... I Born, born in Carlton in my first year out, mm -hmm. but, I, I, but I was a resident at, at St Vincent's uh, in, the, in the emergency department, but I spent a lot of time in Carlton. Uh -huh. And before we get on to St Vincent's and the poem and all of that stuff, can you just give us a bit of a picture of what Carlton was like at that time? Well, uh, it was full of very hard to describe, but it was mainly in the terrace houses that uh, the poetry was being read, and there, were, there, was, there was no explosion of theatre at that time. Mm -hmm. but there, there were productions at Melbourne University, but there were mainly English dramas, um, and the, the, the theatre club, the, the Melbourne University Theatre, were very conservative. What, so what sort of plays or writers were they doing? Well, the only, uh, the only modern plays I did, there were a few painters that were done, mm -hmm. but the rest were, you know... Uh, Rattic and classics. Classics. Or, yeah. Oh, classics. Yeah. Yeah. Marlowe, Shakespeare, etc. Yeah. yeah. And were they, did they give you any joy or any rage or were you indifferent to...? Well, there was one very good production of a painter play and um, the rest of the stuff I, I didn't bother going to and when, when I, I wrote White, White World, um, we tried to get some money out of them, they gave us t t t £12, t £10. And is that, I, I'm not sure, was that Generous or ungenerous no, at that time? No, it's incredibly mean. <laughs> I used to give a hundred quid or, right. or more. Yeah. But because it was Australian, right. they knocked us back. And we did, um, David Campbell was the director, mm -hmm. and he all, all organised uh, to have some interviews with various uh, uh, the theatre folk in, in the university. And in the end, he only got three architecture students, uh, or four architecture students in White and White Wills, and they were quite brilliant. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And so we had to sweat the theatre ourselves, and you know, there were many old tasks. But the, the, uh, the play itself, White and White Wills, was a huge success, and it was packed for a whole week. And um, we couldn't get any reviews except Patrick McKechnie came and saw it, I and mean, he, he was the uh, fine arts, you know, correspondent, and he came and saw it and gave it a rave review. So that was the start of Why, Why Worlds. And so you were saying that the poem, Wedlock, 
yeah. was related to your experience as a yeah. resident of St. Vincent's community. Yeah, in the emergency department, it's quite common to get females coming uh, who've been bashed up and based up like that pole. And they very rarely dogged in their husband, but they just took it. Mm. So quite extraordinary. And as a kind of a young, uh, <laughs> it's a funny phrase in Australia, isn't it? but as a young doctor, <laughs> um, I guess that, that, that's clearly had an, an impact on well, you, that experience. Uh, I mean, with respect to that narrow world. Yeah. But it, that, that, that thing about kind of violence, yeah. you write about quite a lot. Yes. Well, I don't think that I'm conscious of what that thing emerging from the unit. My experiences in hospital, because hmm. I'm, I'm interested in the whole idea of uh, of you being um, like I was thinking this morning, like Ron Elisha, but also like Chekhov, um, a doctor and a playwright. Yes, uh, and it seems to me that with medicine, particularly, there's, there, no, there's no connection. Do, do, do they don't cross over at all in no, your life? No, I, I, I make my plays up; they're, they're confections. What do you think, why do you think there are, or do you have an, a, a, an idea about why so many medical people, I think I know a lot of doctors who are also very, you know, accomplished musicians, for example, I, I as well. I wouldn't have a clue and I don't care. <laughs> Fair enough. So, Wipe With Wire Wheels happens, yes. and that's at Melbourne University. Yeah, that, that was in the architecture. School. And where, what, what year are we there? That's 67. 67, yeah. yeah. And that was uh, September or October 67. Uh huh. And then what were the next well, steps? Well, what happened was that um, uh, two of the cast, uh, mainly uh, uh, David Cable, who was the director, and so one or two of the others decided to start a company or work. At La Mama, mm -hmm. and, uh, and once they got started, I, I was actually the first to, to have a play done at La Mama. It's called Three Old Friends. Yes, which is yeah. in the collection that yeah. we're releasing. Yeah. Yeah. Graham Blundell was, uh, was a ma major force behind oh. all that activity. Mm -hmm. And so, who was that? Was what Betty Burstall was yeah. running? Uh, yeah, she was there. The, the, yeah. The, the, she was there for about 10 years. Yeah. But she was terrific. Yeah, yeah. Amazing woman. And so you went, that, that happened there. And then how did the pram emerge in your, in your life? Well... Oh, because there's a thing about the mama and the pram at the beginning. It's all yeah, very... Well, there was the La Mama company. It was Brian Ram. Mm -hmm. And then there were some other companies. I forget, but there were two or three... Uh, Small companies that emerged very quickly. Yes. Um, didn't Betty Burstall go to New York, go to La Mama in New York, and come back yeah. and want to set up a La Mama? Yeah. Well, she, she, uh, after she came back from New York, she I was living in Carlton there, and uh, she knocked on my door and um, we had a cup of coffee, and she said, oh, "Would you mind, you know, doing some theatre? I've heard you." short plays and so she, she had a look at the short plays and said oh, well I'll, I'll, I'll do I'll, you can do that one so I uh, did three, three old boys three old friends sorry. three old friends and so, then and then didn't Graham and I don't know who else um, Vic Marsh or Kerry or whoever uh, Kerry Dwyer was very started the um, Australian performing no uh, first of all it's called the Louis La Mama Company, oh, and it changed its name to the Australian Performing Group later. Yes. And they went to Perth. Oh, right. And when they were in Perth, they decided to find their own home when so they, they went back to Melbourne. They were in Perth just doing a season or something. Yeah, they, yeah. What, what was the season they did in Perth? Was it Three Old Friends? No, it was Three Old Friends and Who. And Who. Mm -hmm. Who, and uh, Extracts of the uh, World. Wild, wild world. Mm -hmm. And then they came back and they found the Pram Factory. So it was the Australian Performing Group at the Pram Factory. Right. But then it got shortened and it was just called the Pram. Yeah, yeah. So 
but the group was actually the Australian Performing Group. Because those early years are always, you know, whatever you read, they're always very intertwined. You can't tell who was the yeah. mama and who, because obviously it was a huge yeah. crossover, but I know that later on that became somewhat contentious about what had come from where. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was interesting, even though uh, Graham Blunder was a dominant member, it was fairly egalitarian and democratic, uh, both the Lamana Company and APG. Mm -hmm. So they, we really didn't have any directors. It was an actor, actor and writer's theatre. Right. Ah.